Wine TV. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Elite Wine TV. everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host, Mark Fusco, here for another episode of the show. And um, so, on to the next two wines that I got from the Wall Street Journal. Uh, really don't need to do too many introductions. Um, let's just get right into the wine. So this first wine is 2013 Domaine Genestere's Cabernet Sauvignon um, from Bordeaux. Uh, well, actually, the, the domain is in Bordeaux. Bordeaux, but it's a Vin de Pay, is it, sorry, Vin de Pay Doc wine. So in other words, this is a entry level wine. So uh, if you go to the wine, uh, so if you go to the Wall Street Journal wine, uh, you know, wine shop or whatever, wine website, uh, and you look up this particular wine, you'll find that they are selling it for $12.99 a bottle. Now remember, I bought 15 bottles. Uh, some of these are duplicate bottles. 15 bottles for um, uh, just over $97. And that came out to be, you know, like six, I think I already closed out the calculator. Yeah, it was like six fifty a bottle, basically. All right. So, um, so I got these wines, and so far, none of them have been like spectacular. But none of them have been like completely horrible either. Um, I mean, last week's show, the Chianti was meh at best. Okay, so we got that. Going to. There we go. All right, so. Um, who is this? So I, don't have, I, I couldn't find anything really on the internet other than what the Wall Street Journal says about this domain. Uh, Claude Gross made his reputation in Bordeaux, earning ninety-six, earning a ninety-six uh, from Parker for his Chateau de Fleur Morange Saint Emilion Grand Cru. Um, it, then it says, now he's returned to his southern roots in a small domain. Um, small domain genestaires. You know what? Now that I, now that I'm reading this a little bit more and, and kind of looking at it, it says Bordeaux's legends, Bordeaux legends, Cabernet gem. My thinking is that what they're saying is it's a guy who made who who made a really good wine, and. Uh, in Bordeaux, but this domain may not actually be there. So we're gonna really quickly look up, because I don't recognize this town. It could be in Bordeaux, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's not. Here we go. Let Google finish typing all this up, and we will look at the map and see where it is. It could be in Bordeaux, it's just not, it just doesn't have a Bordeaux, um, Appalachian. So that makes me think, even though it could be in Bordeaux, it's just, it's not really there. So let's see. St. Jean d'Ardiers. Okay. It's like near Lyon. That's like Not even close. Okay, so it's not a Bordeaux wine. So this is, it's not a Bordeaux. It is near Lyon. I'm like, I really am just confused as to what in the world this, what's going on here, man? 
Anyway, yeah, it's between Lyon and Mekon. So it's, it's in the Burgundy area. So, okay. But since it's not classified as one of those as a burgundy wine, they can make it, they don't have to use Pinot Noir. Okay, so enough of that. Let's, um, it says offering Bordeaux like finesse in every glass. So I don't know. And it says, oh, it does say it's in the Languedoc region. So um, kind of funny how they're comparing it to a Bordeaux, but it's really from Languedoc. Anyway. That's why it pays doc. Vin de pays doc. All right, so let's just check it out. On the nose. Raspberries. Kind of raspberry candy. Some other kind of aroma. can't really pinpoint it but there's really not much else going on in this nose I don't really smell any earth I don't smell any wood I don't smell any floral um, even even the even the the um, even the fruits pretty faint but yeah it's pretty tight on on the nose Well, on the palate, there's at least something to it. Um, there's a bit of woodsiness to it, a um, bit of tartness to it, like like cedar box, cigar box, that type of thing. Maybe tobacco, um, some red fruit, but there's like a there's a good tobacco flavor from it. And it's, it's mostly just red fruit, maybe a little more specific I can get, but um, it's also a, a tad, a touch of green to it. A touch of, you know, um, I mean that leaf, but uh, maybe like forest floor, like, you know, dried leaves, that type of stuff. It's not a bad wine. I mean, it's, like I said, it's $13 a bottle typically, um, you know, I got it for under seven dollars, so for for that price, it's not bad. If it was seven dollars, thirteen dollars, it's okay. I mean, I mean, it's a French it's a French wine from the Languedoc. Um, it doesn't really it's not something I'm gonna like shout from the mountaintop that you need to buy the wine. Of the, of the three wines so far I've tasted tonight since I've recorded two shows in one day, um, it's the most interesting on the palate. Um, but I wouldn't call it spectacular. I'd probably rather drink the Raymond that I had last week. It's like a few minutes ago. Um, so I'd rather probably enjoy Raymond, the, you know, the Raymond from last week's uh, show. But at the same time, it's not horrible. You know, I, I the the quality of the wines that I'm getting so far is about what I expected for the price you're paying. Okay, I've had better luck with some other places in in the types of wine that um, I bought. All right, let's move on to wine number two. All right, so wine number two is also a red wine. Okay, it didn't. Uh, it didn't close that little thing. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. So um, this is a Spanish wine, and I'm just gonna just get into the. Um, here we go. 
Uh, this is the 2007, if I remember correct, 2007 Las Baracas, not Barancas, but Las Baracas. Ramon Roqueta is the uh, proprietor. Uh, Gran Reserva Tempranillo Cabernet Sauvignon from Cataluna. Okay. And um, so real quick from the, from the website, from the uh, Wall Street Journal website. Um, the, the historic Ramon Roqueta seller passionately, passionately upholds the uh, uniquely Spanish tradition of long barrel aging and cellaring of their finest reds. Uh, this was released at its delicious best, and then I won't go through that. Um, their cellar, which, you know, everything they have in there is stuff I already got from their website. And you, there are websites, there's a website for this wine, so that was kind of cool. Um, but anyway, the cellar dates back to um, $11.99. Now that's kind of cool. Um, I think it is. Um, so it says, no shortage of tradition experience, and I'm sorry, expertise behind this wine, blah, blah, blah. Uh, it's named, so Las Baracas is named for the ancient stone huts dotting the family's vineyards. Tool sheds also once used for sheltering vineyard workers uh, from during hot afternoons. It's 60% uh, Tempranillo and 40% Cabernet Sauvignon. Um, and that's pretty much it. Now, one of the things about, about this um, is that kind of like some other Spanish wines, they do age them at the winery and then they release them. So that's something to make note of is that... Uh, you know, this, this wine sat in the winery for a few years and then they release it. It's not like, you know, they, they age it in the barrel for, say, 12, 18, 24 months, bottle it, and then ship it out. They do all that aging, then they put it in the bottle, they let it sit, and they then they then they put it out when they think it's time to release it. So 2007, so released in 2014, so seven years old. Already has some age, and it's kind of hard to tell. But looking, but compared to the other wines, you can tell there's some age to it. Um, it, it there, there's almost a little bit of uh, brown, um, browning coming into the, into the red. It's hard to tell because I have a red background. But when you look at the other wines, uh, you can see that uh, age has already started to change the color of the wine. So on the nose, it's kind of earthy, kind of musty, kind of like you were hanging out in a cellar, smelling your oak barrels and the mustiness and the dampness, you know, of, of, a, of a barrel room that's probably underground, a cave. There's also like a little bit of, I want to say rubber. Yeah, almost like a little bit of like rubber hose, um, not fresh cut, not fresh cut garden hose. It's a little reference to Psalm. I'm gonna watch that again. I haven't watched it in a while. But yeah, like a little bit of like rubber hose uh, aroma to it too. As far as fruit, maybe a touch of some red fruit, but. I can't get too much more specific than that. No floral, no other wood than just that. That you know, like you're in the you're in the barrel room. But that is, a, and the rubber hose is starting to go away again. The uh, the the barrel room, the barrel room aroma is really starting to take over. Let's check it out. So there's definitely a few things going on in this wine. Um, the palate is very much like the, um, you know, like the nose. Um, get kind of that wood, 
that you know barrel room type of uh, feeling. It did get a little bit of that rubber, that rubber hose. I feel like I get more of the dust, more of the more of the um, musty uh, cellar. I'm going to pour a little bit more just to see if I can get some more um, some more out of this. But um, it's it's not bad. It definitely does not drink or taste like a um, a young wine. So I'm thinking, you know, you know, it, it, it definitely is. It tastes somewhat aged. And just out of convenience just so I can get back into the wine again it's nothing Nothing spectacular. Um, at seventeen dollars a bottle, normal retail, I, I would, I would probably buy something different. That um, I'd probably buy, you know, another Tempranillo. Um, but again, it's just, this is not a wine that's horrible by any means. It's just that I just don't. It doesn't inspire. It doesn't excite me. It's got some great tannins. But on that, it's not it's not something that I'm just gonna again, you know, yell from the mountaintop and say that you have to buy this wine. Um You know, it's, it's pretty decent, but again, I'm not going to say that it's the best wine out there. And a little bit of wine on top, if I took that out, see anything drip out? Yep. So this is going to be one of those where I'm probably going to have to vacuum in. Let's see if this trip, if anything drips out of here. I can't tell. Nope. So this is probably going to be a, a vacuum in type of situation here. Anyway, I'll play with that later when we're off camera. Um, as far as the wine is concerned, it's okay. So now I've had, what, six wines, eight wines, at least six of the wines from Wall Street Journal. And I can't remember any of them being spectacular that I would rush out and buy tomorrow. Um, so... In a kind of you get what you pay for uh, lesson, uh, you know, when, when you have these awesome deals on wine, um, especially when they come out to like less than ten dollars a bottle, you, you, you might not exactly be like jumping for joy that you've got this twenty dollar or fifteen dollar or thirteen dollar bottle of wine for you know six bucks, seven bucks. Okay. Um, I've had, I feel like I've had better luck with some of the other online um, wine ordering places, um, more specifically Underground Cellar, um, but I have, uh, I do have a growing virtual seller or virtual, yeah, virtual seller with Som Select, um, which is Ian Cobble's uh, wine thing. Uh, I like his, his is kind of cool, so one, you know, it's one deal every day, um, <clears throat> wines that he is apparently picking himself. Um, they seem to really, he seems to concentrate on old world, which is kind of cool because Underground Cellar concentrates on new world. Um, they they both do the other, but most of their wines tend to come from one, from, you know, Underground Cellar pretty much is, it's most of the wines really come from old world. I'm sorry, new world. Now, they're not all California. You get some South American, Australian, stuff like that. Um, and you might get some old world wines in there, 
but uh, Psalm Select seems to seems to be more of an old world thing, and it could be just their preferences. Okay, and there's nothing wrong with that because if you find somebody that you like that that you like their reviews or you like their preferences or the wines they like, you know, then then you can kind of rely on them to give you good advice on those types of wines. If every wine that I try, you you know you're not going to like it anyway, then why are you watching? Um, anyway, so um, that's going to do it for today's show. Uh, as always, thank you for stopping by. You click the, click the links above to friend me up. Hit that PayPal button over there to donate and send me a little few ducats. Uh, I'll have links below of you know from the Wall Street Journal and the website for um, for this bad boy, uh, or at least the the company. And um, I'm going to vacuum in that wine, and we will see everyone again next time.